trying to predict the future it's a constant human endeavor i mean it's a very integral part of being a human being we want to control our environment we want to look into the future predict it plan it and try and twist it in the direction that's consistent with our desires and goals and so on however we often go too far in that direction and we often fall into this trap of illusion of control uh, that is we end up assuming we control things when we actually don't how do people actually make decisions in real life you know what goes on in their minds when they're dealing with risk and uncertainty how do people perceive risk how do they try and measure it so it's not about how should people do things it's about how people actually do things my name is anil gaba i'm a professor of decision sciences at nci so what's happening is that different psychological biases exist at various levels of an organization which creates paradoxical tensions that must be managed so for me personally the only way forward is not to be ideological about it like a church now why do i go because it is a nice and an effective platform for dissemination of uh, of of the research and at the same time to learn firms spend billions of dollars annually on r&d effort and yet the potential returns from those investments remain highly uncertain and very wide ranging this underlines one of the key challenges in innovation and r&d which is managing risk now the perception of risk and the consequent risk taking is distorted by different psychological biases to be clear on the definition of risk versus uncertainty if you toss a coin will it be heads or will it be tails what is, the probability of heads is 0.5 so what we call it this is risk because we can estimate probabilities now think about will will there be another bubble in the financial markets the answer is yes but can we estimate the probabilities when will it happen in what form that's uncertainty so in real life what you face more often is uncertainty think think of a swiss german investment banker named klaus lives on the upper east side in manhattan complete control freak hates surprises likes to have everything planned in his life So one morning family is asleep he's walking on the beach sun is beaming down on him he gets worried he's going to get skin cancer so sits under a tree from his backpack takes out some sunscreen lotion and starts putting on his body while he's doing that a coconut drops on his head and he dies the point of this story is if you think about it very broadly speaking there are two types of uncertainty one is what we call sub bay uncertainty uncertainty which can be quantified which can be measured So this other type of uncertainty is what we call coconut uncertainty which is difficult if not impossible to measure. Sometimes you have risk but more often than not it's uncertainty where it's impossible to come up with distributions or probabilities. So that's the real challenge in the real life. So in other words can we come up with some useful parsimonious frugal rules or heuristics that people can actually use in real life people like medical doctors public policy makers individuals to make better decisions to get a better handle on risk and uncertainty so uh, i'm a scientist but if when you start talking to the media they want a one line you know they want a headline quite often they don't even want the mean answer they want the worst case scenario you know millions yeah. could die mm. or maybe only a couple yeah so people look for artificial resolution of the uncertainty when it can't really be done you know another implication is basically the paradox of control that that business managers individuals medical doctors policy public policy makers should realize that that there's a flip side to trying to control that if you actually don't try to control what you can't control you you might encounter more beneficial outcomes it doesn't mean you don't try to predict the future you still try but keeping in mind that there's serious limits to what you can predict